Greetings, listeners, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you as we head towards what I believe will be the the beginning of a, a catastrophic year in 2012. Actually, it will be the beginning of the end, so to speak, uh, where all the prophesied uh, destruction that has been uh, prophesied to accompany the end of the world as we know it will be we will begin to see the fulfillment of those prophecies from the book of Revelation and in the Gospels and in other portions of scriptures. This is uh, Paul Sandhu from signsoftheend.net. This is a screenshot of my website and it links to uh, my uh, blog as well as uh, my YouTube channels on which I post uh, frequently. So I hope uh, that you will uh, watch the information that I present, you will think about it, you will meditate on it, and you will also share with it, it with all your uh, friends and family and people that you love and care for. Today I wanted to speak to you about uh, a matter that is somewhat economic in nature, but it is also connected to scripture, and therefore I wanted to tie the two together. This is a story that has been developing over the past uh, year or so, uh, where there have been many, many calls from the heads of the IMF, that is the International Monetary Fund, uh, to uh, that the warning us that you know that there is a dire economic crisis that's going on, and essentially that the world is going to come collapsing all around us. Uh, a couple of days ago, I posted this article on my blog, Apocalypse2010.blogspot.com, which was titled "IMF Head Warns Again for the Nth Time That Global Economy Is Threatened." And this is a little note that I had in that uh, before the uh, link to the article from Yahoo News, which actually was titled, IMF Head Warns Global Economy Threatened. As uh, I'm sure most of my listeners are aware, and listeners and viewers are aware, on this blog I post news articles that are relevant to uh, the fulfillment of end-time prophecies, and I post some notes, etc., with it to give my interpretation of what these news reports mean in the light of scripture. So this was my note to this uh, article from Yahoo News. Uh, as noted in some previous blog posts such as IMF Head Predicts, 1930s style depression and World War III, Christine Lagarde is at it again warning of pending economic doom. Good to know that finally people in positions of power agree with some of us no names that have been warning of, of much the same for several years now. But is she proposing a different solution this time, one that may actually work? No, she is regurgitating the same decades-old propaganda that what Europe needs is more integration, not less. She is proposing that Europeans give over, give over their sovereignty to an unelected body of bankocrats rather bank o rats that will share their own Dom Perignon and beluga caviar lifestyle with all Europeans. Where have we heard that one before? Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar must be pink with envy as all Europe is enslaved without so much as a shot being fired or an army crossing borders. So essentially what the IMF, which is of course a creation of the rich and powerful elites of our world for their own purposes, not for the betterment of humanity. It is proposing that uh, the European nations that are in the EU, and of course that would ultimately mean all of Europe and uh, ultimately beyond that even the rest of the world, is to give over their sovereignty, their freedom over to an unelected body that will make all decisions, political, financial, military, on behalf of these people. So essentially this is the creation of an empire without a military conquest which we are know in scripture from Revelation 13 that and other portions of scripture like the book of Daniel and in the Gospels that these days will come when the whole world will be united under one person. It has not happened since the days of Nimrod and I will make that connection now in this new post that I have just posted today. And this one is titled, More on the IMF Calls to Destroy the Sovereignty of European Nations. So how is this, what is happening 
in the economic political realm in our world related to the fulfillment of prophecy well okay let me read what I have my notes on this article this article by the way is from a website titled market ticker and on this article uh, it's written by uh, a gentleman named Carl Denninger who writes good articles on economic matters and political matters and the title of this article is IMF all your sovereignty IMF that this means all your sovereignty belongs to me so essentially what the writer is saying is that the IMF wants all of our sovereignty to belong to them so let me just briefly read from this article before I go into the prophetic part of it what uh, how I make a prophetic connection to what is happening so this article begins they don't give up do they and the head of the International Monetary Fund said the world economy was in danger and urged the Europeans to speak with one voice on a debt crisis that has rattled the global financial system the world economy is in a dangerous situation she told Francis journal du dimanche in an interview published on Sunday the debt crisis which continues into 2012 after a European Union summit on December 9th only temporarily calmed markets is a crisis of confidence in public debt and in the solidity of the financial system she said that's because and this is the author's note on this that's because it's a public part fraud public fraud and you are a big part of it Lagarde added national parliaments grumble at using public money or the guarantee of their support of their state to support other countries protectionism is in the debate and everyone for themselves is winning ground well of course everyone should be for themselves why should you go and you, if your neighbor goes around gambling you know goes to Vegas blows all his money drinks champagne you know goes out to whorehouses and then you know you're supposed to come around and bail him out give your hard-earned money over to him that's essentially what's going on in Europe so why should they not protect their sovereignty protectionism it is hardly protectionism to refuse to spend your hard-earned money to bail out the profligacy of some other nation that's called prudence and the right to make that decision is called sovereignty all right now let me come back to this is a, a quote from this article you can read the whole article it is linked to uh, to my uh, blog this article that I have posted today so the whole article is there please uh, read all of it if uh, you have the time it's a short article and I will recommend it so this is my note on what this article has is uh, is uh, claiming in a previous post two days ago titled IMF head warns again for the nth time that the global economy is threatened from which I briefly read uh, at the beginning of this uh, presentation I had come to the conclusion that the game plan, game plan for international bank or rats or bankocrats or banksters as they have been fondly come as they have fondly come to be known is to use the eurozone crisis to create a super euro government like the EU actually it will be the EU parliament with dictatorial powers that will rule Europe with an iron fist much like Stalin controlling the whole Soviet empire from Moscow the end result would be the decimation of the European middle class and a descent into an Orwellian world that in reality would be far worse than anything that Orwell could have imagined since the European contagion will spread to the whole world 1984 will become reality sooner rather than later as has been planned by the wholly evil and corrupt powers that be since the days when Nimrod's dream of ruling the world from the Tower of Babel was shattered by the Lord God it is interesting to note that the EU symbolizes itself by the Tower of Babel God gave man a variety of languages to save man from himself but the EU in defiance of the living God claims that it will speak with one voice for all men what I mean by this you know God dividing man into different languages different languages and cultures they serve a purpose of maintaining freedom okay if it is everybody speaks one language and has one culture it is much more easier to unite them and to rule them than when there are different languages and cultures when people perceive that 
there is a threat from a different language or a culture, they will protect themselves. And therefore, it is not in their interest to give over all their freedom and sovereignty to a peoples who are different than they are. And that is what has been attempted to be done in Europe. Europe for, for 5,000 years or 4,000 years, Europeans have fought amongst themselves because they don't want to be ruled by a central body. They like to maintain their freedom and freedom is a product. Sovereignty is a product of your own language and your own culture. And if you give that up, then you give yourself over to slavery. So yes, although these different languages and cultures, they breed differences and they even lead to wars. In the end, it is the only mechanism that is available to evil men to maintain some form of freedom. Okay, so not since the days of Nimrod has one person spoken for the whole world. Tragically for the world, this worldwide economic crisis, now focused on Europe, will serve the purpose of ushering in the Antichrist beast that will once again unite the world under one person's rule, but that person will be a hard taskmaster and that world will be hell on earth, not paradise. And this is why these things are related. What's happening in the economic realm and the political realm in our world is very much linked to the fulfillment of the end of the world prophecies as noted in scripture. And in Revelation 13, we can read, it was given unto him, which is the beast. Okay, let me actually read this from the beginning of the chapter. 13.1, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. This formula, by the way, applies to all human political leaderships and business leaders. Their power stems from Satan who is the dragon and the serpent. And I once, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. It has been prophesied that these days are going to come and the EU problems are working towards bringing them about. Now let us look at the couple of pictures here. And let me go to this article here, which was uh, on, uh, uh, okay, let me just, sorry, uh, let me find the link to this article. where This was an article from a website that I found. It is on the, on the Tower of Babel. Here we go. It is titled, Reversing an Act of God with the Modern Tower of Babel. So let's read from Genesis 11, chapter, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, which, by the way, is modern-day Iraq, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they all have one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. See, since man had turned to evil in the Garden of Eden, and man's heart and thoughts were evil, which had brought about the flood that uh, had led to the destruction of the world that then existed, 
it was imperative that they do not all work together and 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 combine their imagined evil powers okay or the powers of imagination that evil would give them because they would exercise that this great understanding that they had by uniting together with one voice for evil only because their hearts were evil this is why it was imperative that their languages be confounded go to now let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build a city therefore is the name of it called Babel because the Lord there did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did the Lord God scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth if they had continued as they had things would have deteriorated much at a very rapid speed as they did before the flood and the world would again have come to the brink of destruction as it is fast approaching now but it would have happened a long long time ago and it would not have lasted as it has for thousands of years an unfinished tower this is the article and you know it shows some pictures and symbols that are very very relevant to this talk that we are doing today about what the IMF and other European powers are proposing to do in Europe above is an illustration as you can see these illustrations this is the European Parliament building above is an illustration of one of the buildings of the European Parliament in Strasbourg France the Louis Weiss building which includes a tower that appears to be unfinished Below on the left is a painting done in 1563 of the Tower of Babel. Uh, below on the right is a poster produced by the European Union symbolically depicting their mission. It combines the 12 stars of the EU flag with the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel with the motto, Europe, many tongues, one voice. Note also that the stars are shown as inverted pentagrams and occult symbol for Satan. So is this mission that the IMF and the European powers are proposing, is it a satanic mission? Without doubt it is. You can see this is a picture of the, tower, the painting of the Tower of Babel, and this is the poster of the EU. These are the pentagrams. These are like the go to Mendes, uh, you know, evil pentagrams. That's the symbol of Satan. And look at this here, Europe, many tongues, one voice. So the Lord God determined that it was important for man not to have one language when his heart is evil, but that is exactly what the European Parliament, the EU, is all about. And that is the model that is going to be replicated for the whole world. The Tower of the Louis Weiss Building shows below, although it looks unfinished, this is the Tower of Babel, was designed with the express purpose of resembling the Tower of Babel as depicted in Brueghel's painting. Okay, the European Constitution, this is again, look at this here, same thing, pentagrams you know uh, statues of popes so this is this is again the link to the vatican as the vatican and the catholic the catholic church is absolutely 100 percent involved in the creation of the eu because the pope has long dreamed of ruling the world from jerusalem and that is what it is all working towards i will stop here now thank you for listening and uh may god bless you with more knowledge and understanding as we continue to speak about these prophetic matters also about Genesis which again you know we have to go back to the past to understand our present thank you and God bless